Hi, today we're going to be learning how to solve word problems involving fractions. The first thing we need to do is just go through some things that will help you while you're solving word problems. Just remember, when you're solving a word problem, the very first thing you need to do is make sure that you read that problem carefully. Identify important information that might be helpful to underline the key points in the word problem so that you can focus on the information that's helpful and not be focusing on things that might be confusing and might not help you to actually solve the problem. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go and write a number sentence. This is what's going to help you to actually solve that problem. Okay, so you need to take the information and you need to turn it into a mathematical statement that will help you to solve the problem. And then once you've got your number sentence, you need to go and solve it. Sometimes you might need to do these two steps more than once. If you've got a question that requires multiple steps, then you might need to write another sentence and solve it and then write another number sentence and solve it until you actually get to the final answer that will help you to answer the question that they've asked you in the number the, in the word problem. The next thing you need to do once you have solved it is you need to go back and answer the question that they asked. Okay, you can't just leave your answer as five. If they asked how many apples, you need to answer saying five apples. So you need to put it back into the context of the word problem. Okay, then something else that's going to be helpful when we're doing word problems, particularly with fractions, is you need to know that the word of generally means multiplication. So if you are told that there's half of 20, or something then that means half times 20 so when you're converting the word form into your number sentence the word of is generally going to mean multiplication and that's particularly going to help you when we're doing the fractions the word problems with fractions okay so now let's go and have a look at our first example for today in this example we've got a barbecue and at the barbecue, seven tenths of the burgers were eaten. The following day, the family ate five sixths of what remained. And the rest was given to the cat. We need to find out what fraction of the burgers the cat ate. Okay, so first thing you need to be aware of is they have not told us at any point how many burgers there were to start with. We've been told we, we, were, we were working with fractions of the total amount of burgers. Okay, we've been told that seven tenths of the burgers were eaten but we don't know how many they started with so what we're going to do is we're going to say that they started with the total amount of burgers which is a whole okay so we're going to work with one as the whole that we're going to start off with as the total for the burgers so over here i'm going to start off by saying that they ate seven tenths so they started off with the total amount which is one Okay, even though it's not the actual number of burgers, that is what we're using as the whole amount of burgers, and a whole is one. So the total amount of burgers minus seven tenths is going to be that the seven tenths is how much they ate at the barbecue. So now we're going to be able to find out how much was left after the barbecue was finished. Now one is the same as one over one minus seven tenths. Now I need to find my LCD. The LCD over here is going to be 10. So there's going to be something over 10 minus something over 10. 1 over 1 is the same as 10 over 10 minus 7 over 10 stays the same. Then I can simplify that giving me 3 over 10. So 3 tenths is how much was left. If they ate 7 tenths, it means that 3 tenths are left. Okay, so this is how much is left. 3 tenths of the burgers are left after the barbecue. Okay, so now we know how much is left. Now we need to go and find out how much the family ate the next day. So it says the following day, the family ate 5 sixths of what remained. So what remained is this over here. This is what remained after the barbecue. So we need to work out 5 sixths of this amount okay so remember of means multiplication so it's going to be five sixths of three tenths which we now need to go and simplify so three goes in here once three goes in there twice five goes in there once five goes in there twice that leaves me with one times one in my numerator 
over 2 times 2 in my denominator. So that's going to be a quarter. So this quarter is a quarter of what we started with, the amount of burgers that was that we started with. So it's a quarter of the original amount of burgers is what is left, uh, is what the family ate the next day. Okay, now we need to go and find out how much the cat got to eat. That was what they asked us. They asked us what fraction of the burgers did the cat eat. So now I know what fraction the family ate the next day. Now I need to work out what fraction the cat got to eat. So the cat got to eat whatever was left over. So first of all, we started with one, which is the total amount of burgers. Then, after the barbecue, there was three tenths left. Then the family ate a quarter. So now we're going to take the three tenths, which is what was left after the barbecue, and we're going to take away the amount that the family ate, which is a quarter. And that will help us to work out how much is left for the cat to get. So now I need to find my LCD. So the LCD for 10 and 4 is 20. So it's going to be something over 20 minus something over 20. Multiply this by 2, that gives me 6 over 20 minus. Multiply this by 5, that gives me 5 over 20. So that means that the cat got to eat 6 over 20 minus 5 over 20 is 1 over 20. So now I know, so that the cat, now I know that the cat got to eat 1 20th of the burgers. And that's what you should end up with, with that, from that problem. Okay, so now let's go and do a couple of or a few questions that you're going to do yourself. The first one over here, at the family reunion, Granny Nomsa, age 96, holds the title of the oldest relative, while little Wazi, aged four, is the youngest. What fraction of Granny Nomsa's age is Luazi's age? Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute to work this out. Okay, so let's go through that. So this was actually just a very simple one where you're having to write the ages as a fraction. So they're asking what fraction of Granny Norms' age is Luazi's age. So Luazi is four years old, so that's going to be four out of Granny Norms' age, which is 96. Okay, but remember, any time you're working with fractions, you can't leave your answer like this. You have to simplify it as far as possible. So in this case, four goes into four once and 4 goes into 96 24 times so that means that this simplifies to 1 over 24 okay 1 over 24 once you've got that you then need to go back and answer the question the question was what fraction of granny norms's age is luazi's age so therefore luazi her age is 1 over 24, 1 24th of Granny Norms' age. So that answers the question that they asked. Right, question B. Here you've been asked, or you've been told, that Tando and John have a bag of sweets. They decide to each eat 1 sixth of the sweets. If there are 84 sweets altogether, how many will they each eat? Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes to work this out.
Okay, so let's go through that question. So first of all, you were told that they have this bag of sweets and there are 84 sweets in the bag altogether. And they decide to each eat one sixth of the sweets. Now remember, of means multiplication. We need to find out how many they will each eat. Now they're eating the same amount, so we only have to work it out once. Okay, so it's one sixth of 84. Okay, now remember, we need to make sure that we write this as a fraction times a fraction. So it's going to be one sixth times 84 over one. 84 is the same as 84 over one. And now I can go and simplify and I can say, well, six goes into six once and six goes into 84 14 times. And that leaves me with one times 14 over one times one. Now, when I've got one at the bottom, I don't need to write it. So it's just going to be 14. So now I can go and answer my question. My question is that they each eat 14 sweets. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question B, that they each eat 14 sweets. Question C. Lerato is planning a picnic. She has 800 Rand to spend on it. She spends one fifth on sandwiches a quarter on fruit and one tenth on drinks. How much money does she have left to spend on blankets and games? Right, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through this. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can do this. Okay, the first thing you can do, or one of the ways that you can do it, is to take the different fractions they gave you and say how much did she spend on sandwiches and fruit and drinks all together? What fraction did she spend? And then use that to work out how much, she, how, what amount of money she spent on that, and then subtract that from the total amount of money she had to work out how much she has left for blankets and games. It's not the only way of doing it. You can also work out what amount of money she spent on sandwiches, what amount of money she spent on fruit, and what amount of money she spent on drinks, and subtract all of them from the total. Okay, so there's more than one way of doing this question. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay, so I'm going to say, first of all, I'm going to add up the different fractions. I'm going to say a fifth plus a quarter plus a tenth this is going to give me the total amount as a fraction that she spent on sandwiches and fruit and drinks okay so i'm going to simplify that by first finding my lcd which is going to be 20. so something over 20 plus something over 20 plus something over 20 multiply that by 4 so it's going to be 4 over 20 multiply that by 5 so it's going to be 5 over 20 multiply that by 2 so it's going to be 2 over 20 and that gives me 11 over 20. So now I know that she's already spent 11 20ths of the money 
on the sandwiches and the fruit and the drinks. The next thing I need to work out is how much she has left to spend on the blankets. Now I can either take this fraction and subtract it to, from one to find out what fraction she has left and then use that to work out the amount of money or I can work out the amount of money from this and then subtract that from the total amount of money. It doesn't matter which way you do it, okay? So I'm going to take this, I'm going to work out this as an amount of money. So I'm going to say she, this is 11 twentieths of 800 rand. Okay, and then I'm going to take that and I'm going to solve it. This I can change to 800 over 1. So that's 11 over 20 times 800 over 1. And now over here, 20 goes in there once, 20 goes in there 40 times. So that gives me 11 times 40. which is 440. So this is how much she spent on the sandwiches and the fruit and the drinks. So now I need to work out how much she has left to spend on blankets and games. So now I'm going to say 800 minus 440 and that gives me 360 Rand. Okay, now as I said, this is not the only way of doing it. You might have done it a different way. So long as you ended up with the same solution and everything you did along the way was mathematically correct, then it doesn't matter that you might have a different method to what I had. Okay, so quite often when you have questions, particularly the questions like this, you might have different ways of getting to the same result as a method that somebody else might use. Okay, question D. Tabor is 120 centimeters tall. His sister is a quarter taller than Tabor. How tall is Tabor's sister? Okay, when it says that his sister is a quarter taller, it's a quarter of his height taller than him. Than him. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work this one out. Okay, so let's go through this last question for today. So we're starting off, they've told us that Tabo is 120 centimeters tall. So we know what his height is. His sister is a quarter taller than him. Okay, so first I'm going to work out what a quarter of his height is. Okay, so a quarter of, remember is time, so it's a quarter of 120. And I'm going to write this as a fraction straight away. 120 over 1. 
When I simplify this, I can divide 4 in here once and 4 goes in there 30 times. So that is going to be 1 times 30 over 1 times 1, which is just 30. Okay, so now I know that a quarter of Tabor's height is 30 centimeters. It says that his sister is a quarter taller than him. So I'm going to take this 30 centimeters, which is a quarter of his height, and I'm going to add it to his height. So that's going to be 120 plus 30, which gives me 150 centimeters. So that means that his sister is 150 centimeters tall. So that's what you should have got for question D. Now again, this is not necessarily the only way of doing this question. Okay, you could have worked out that she is one and a quarter of his height and then use that to work out one and a quarter of 150 or, or a half of 120 would have given you 150. So again, there's more than one way of doing this question. Okay, so just be aware when you're doing word problems, there is often more than one method that you can use that will get you to the same result. And that is how we solve word problems involving common fractions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.